Hello guys, uh, Fru here. Welcome to today's uh, presentation. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be looking at uh, Snowflake connecting to Google Collab Notebook. Uh, a couple of things we're going to do in the presentation is we're going to look at Snowflake setup, which is pretty easy to do. By now, you should have a Snowflake account uh, to follow along. We're also going to set up uh, Collab Notebooks. We're going to see how to connect uh, Collab to Snowflake uh, quick and easy. I'm going to run through some scripts. Uh, to see how we can analyze some data in Snowflake uh, using a notebook capabilities of Collab. And we're going to have some discussions along the way. Now, just for a little bit of context, uh, Collab is a notebook provided by Google. Uh, the, the ecosystem for notebooks is pretty big. There are lots of uh, different notebooks you can choose from, everything from Jupyter Notebooks all the way to Spark, uh, Apache Zeblin, uh, Kaggle, uh, DeepNote, and this ecosystem is pretty huge. So. Uh, for today, our focus is on Google Collabs. It's uh, pretty free. You can just access it and you should be able to work with it. Follow along. I'm going to timestamp the video. So if you want to jump into any section, you're more than welcome to. Now, what exactly is Google Collab? You can search for it on Google. It's a, it's a research product from Google. Uh, Google usually has a lot of research projects. And if you see from your FAQ, uh, it does tell you what exactly it is, right? One thing you can do is you can go ahead and download like Apache Zeblin or uh, Jupyter Notebooks and host it yourself and go through all the nine yards. But if you want it quick and easy, uh, Google Collabs could be an alternative for you to use. That makes it extremely, extremely easy. Uh, this is what the, the UI looks like. You come in, it gives you the traditional notebook feel as a data scientist and uh, using this to connect with a powerful, elastic uh, data platform like Snowflake could just be the holy grail you've been looking for for your data analytics and needs. So that said, the Snowflake environment we're going to be working with is my demo account in here. And if you don't have a Snowflake account, uh, you can go ahead on the website, create a demo account, and you should have something very similar to what I have. Uh, every Snowflake account you create is going to have a sample data set. That's really the beauty of running in the cloud as a service. So if you want to play around, you want to educate yourself and get familiar with it, and you need some data, there is some data sets available in there right for everybody to use. So Snowflake sample data is what we're going to be using uh, in the presentation for today. Uh, this is a TPC H uh, data set. There is a TPC H and it's uh, TPC uh, DS. I'm going to use the TPC H uh, SF1 uh, data set, which has a line item table within that so we can just do a select of the top 100 records you can see uh, in here these are some records in here so what, what we want to do for today is connect to a notebook bring in this data see how we can do some data science machine learning or whatever data scientists do in notebooks i'm not really a data scientist per se uh, but you can do your magic in a notebook and then write the results back into snowflake or visualize the results in the notebook uh, in a pretty intuitive way so Right off the bat, we've taken care of step one, setting up Snowflake uh, quick and easy. You can get set up uh, with Snowflake. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, the second piece here, which is to set up uh, the Collab uh, Notebook. Now, like I said, it's pretty free. You, all you need is a Google account and just access uh, this link. Welcome to research and you can be up and running. Uh, in Google Collab. So I already have one. I'm not going to go ahead and set up a new one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new notebook. If you have an existing notebook from, uh, say, Jupyter or Zeppelin or some other place, you can bring it in. But here we're going to create one from scratch, all right, and see how we can take this notebook and connect it to uh, to Snowflake. So let's call this uh, Tech with Fru Lab. Uh, demo so that's what we're going to call a notebook so uh print uh plain vanilla let's move uh, the image to the left side here um so we have some good real estate now the very first thing that we're going to do to make this work is we're going to need the snowflake connector as you can imagine the notebook we have here running in google completely as a service think about google docs you do nothing you pay nothing for it instead of you trying to just do the heavy task of installing your own notebook, I think this can really give you the opportunity to be up and running very, very quickly. So let's go ahead and uh, install uh, the connectors here, right? And this connector is going to allow Snowflake, uh, it's just basically going to use a uh, PIP 
uh, installed to get us the Snowflake connector for Python. If I was working with Spark, I'm going to get the, the connector for Spark. So let's run this. It's going to take a few seconds here. It's going to go out. It's going to uh, get a couple of uh, libraries and it's going to import that for us. Uh, I think I might be missing something. Pip install. Am I missing anything? Let's just uh, double check. All right. I did double check. Apparently, it did not like my comment. So just do pip install Snowflake connector. And uh, basically, it's just going to go out to the repository, pull the connector for us. And that's what we, we need. There might be some warning signs in here, but nothing to really worry about, nothing to phone home about. It's all uh, just some warnings uh, for us. It takes a few seconds or so, and uh, this should be all good. I think we have successfully installed our connector. Now, that's great. So now we have our connector. Uh, we can go ahead and really start doing some, some stuff. So in here, let's add another uh, piece of code. And in here now, for this piece of code, what we're going to do is import a few modules that we're going to need. So we we'll need the pandas, numpy, uh, matplotlib to visualize some of the results. Just anything you need at this point, you can go ahead and import it uh, at this point. So uh, just go ahead and run that uh, code snippet and we should be all good. Now, the next piece that we have that, that has run, let's go ahead and add another code block in here. And what we're going to do in this code block is to get the password. So this is a little bit of a module that allows us to get the password so I don't have to uh, write that on my screen. You can completely skip this piece, but you see why I do this just so that everyone doesn't see what my password is uh, right here. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, run this. You notice it's going to ask for my password. And what I'm going to do is put in the password in there. Uh, voila, it's taking my password. It saved it. Hopefully no one knows what that password is uh, at this point. All right, so let's go ahead, add another code block in here. And for this one, this is where we actually create the connection to Snowflake. So in this one, we're going to go ahead and say, hey, let's create a connection uh, to Snowflake. And uh, my user, of course, is Tech with Fru, and I'm going to my Snowflake account, which you guys already uh, know. It's just a trial account out here in Canada. I don't know why I use Canada, but that's what we're going to be, uh, be using I'm in the U.S., so I just happen to use the Central Canada uh, region. So uh, we have that. Let's go back to the collab. I think it's this one. And basically, I'm specifying my user and the password. And this is where it, it gets interesting, right? I could hand code my password in here. But you guys who scream at me, if everybody gets to see my password, not good. So uh, because I've passed it as a variable, now I can access that variable directly from here as a password and the account that I have. Uh, is uh, my account uh, from the URL. Now you can put in more parameters in here, like your warehouse, your, your schema, your database. Uh, for now, I'm just going to skip all of that. I think it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to fully qualify my straight, my queries. So let's go ahead, run that. And we should be good. My connection has been set up. Uh, there are no problems. Now, the next piece that we're going to do is uh, let's add a code block in here to tell us what query we're going to run. Okay, so in here, I'm just going to go ahead, select uh, star from this uh, particular database uh, schema and line item. I'm going to get the top 1000 just so we don't get a lot of stuff. Okay, so this is the table we're going after and we're getting the top. Let's make it uh, actually top 10,000. I think that should be a little bit better. Let's do top 10,000. So we're defining a SQL uh, query in there. And at this point, we haven't done anything really fun. Uh, we're going to go ahead and basically uh, create uh, a connection to execute that query. So we're going to run this guy uh, here just to hold that connect that query in a string. And we're going to go ahead and execute that and then hold that uh, as well. Now, uh, we have some data we can begin to play with. Okay. Uh, so at this point now, we have... Uh, we've executed that query, we've fetched all the data, and we're holding that in that parameter. So let's go ahead now at this point and then run some sample queries against it. The first thing is we're going to read uh, the, the pandas data frame there. You can see the definition, uh, which is the beauty about using notebooks as such. And we're going to just get an info of what we have, right? So just basic ABC uh, stuff. We see the schema we're getting. We see the data types. And, uh, and just basic information at this point for us to, 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 to see. Okay, uh, pretty good. Again, nothing to phone home about. It's just ABC. I think data scientists can do 
uh, pretty much uh, very interesting stuff. But we're all connecting now to Snowflake. So you're seeing we're getting data from my Snowflake environment now available within my uh, notebook for us to do data science work. So let's go ahead, add another block in here. And for this block, we're just going to do a quick group by, you know, in this data set, there is a shipping uh, for the line items, uh, and there is a ship, uh, ship mode by air, by truck, by rail. Um, and then there's an instruction in there or, or instruct. And we let's just get some idea where, how much do we ship by, right? Is it by air, by land, by sea? Let's just get that idea, an idea of that, uh, uh, of, of what's going on with the data. So let's uh, run this. And we can see by A is kind of a, uh, by, la by um, I don't know what FOB is, but by mail, if somebody knows what FOB, let me know. By truck, I think uh, looking at this truck seems to be kind of high. We can uh, sort this in an interesting fashion. Uh, but this is where you really start doing your stuff as a data scientist. Uh, this is where the magic happens. Um, and you can really get more, uh, uh, exotic and more sophisticated than I can uh, at this point. Once you have all your data, you know all the the different commands in here. You can go ahead and uh, and and use those. So what I'm gonna do now in here is let's um, let's take a look at a different way of looking at uh, the data sets we've brought to see if there are any nulls in the data. Uh, it took a while, it ran, and so far, no nulls, right? Remember, I brought in just 10,000 records, so that might not necessarily be uh, the best thing uh, for us. Again, let's do just basic, basic stuff, nothing too uh, fancy. We're going to describe, get some statistics about the ship mode. Uh, how many records are there? 10,000. How many are unique? Seven. Top is FOB, right? And then uh, frequency, it's uh, you got it in there. So you're just basically doing descriptive analytics or whatever it is you're doing at this point. Now, we can continue as such, but I think a lot of folks who do data science kind of like visualization. They want to uh, see things in charts and graphs, right? Graphs tell really interesting stories. So what if we can take this data and do a quick visualization on top? If you remember, we brought in uh, at some point in here, let's go back, we brought in the Mat, uh, plot leap, uh, library. So we're going to take advantage of that and do, uh, do some quick uh, plotting of the data set. So let's just uh, get shipping uh, totals, which is going to group by that and put that in a variable. And then we're going to take that variable and then plot that. Uh, so plot the shipping totals as um, a bar uh, graph. Again, nothing too fancy in here. I'm not doing any sorting, anything exotic. And voila, you see uh, we have some results set uh, sorted for us. Well, not sorted, but at least visualized for us. So uh, visually here, I can at least start getting an idea that maybe mail and FOB are more, and then uh, rail is not so much. And if you really wanted to get uh, more fancy, you can you know keep going. And if I wanted to, at any point, I can just basically generate a SQL statement and then write the results back into Snowflake after I've done all my analysis and all my all the magic now within my um, uh, my notebook uh, here. Again, a quick and easy uh, notebook you can set up. Uh, that you can continue with this. And I'm not going to bore you with uh, uh, with basic queries, but hopefully you get a point. Uh, number one, you can connect very easily to Snowflake, uh, pulling data, uh, passing your password, bringing the data, do your machine learning, do your data science, do your analysis, do your data engineering. And once you're ready, uh, from here, it's all running uh, in Google Colab provided for free, and you can write the results back. So let me go back just to do a recap of what we've seen uh, in here. Uh, bear with me. Set up Snowflake, done. Uh, set up Colab Notebook, easy, just free, free, free. All right, connect Colab to Snowflake, uh, quick and easy. We did that. And then a couple of discussions. What I'm going to do is this uh, notebook, I'm going to make this available in my Git uh, repository. Link in the description below. If you want to import my notebook, follow along, see the commands I was running, uh, you certainly can. And then all you have to do at that point is to switch over my account to your account, my user, of course, to your user. And um, if you have a Snowflake account, I'm guessing you would have the sample data set available. You can use the same, uh, and this can give you a really good idea. And in no time, you can be a data, science work, a data scientist working with a notebook uh, quick and easy. Again, hopefully this was helpful to you. Uh, this is through. I hope you got a lot of value. Uh, you've been awesome. I've been through and I'll see you in the next uh, presentation.